The UFC just signed a Cuban monster. Robella's Despain is a six foot seven, 260 pound bulldozing machine with an 87 inch reach, the longest reach in UFC history. He's a striker coming from Taekwondo. Very crazy to see someone that big able to move as fast as he does. His last three fights combined lasted 22 seconds total. His last fight was a six second knockout. The fight before that was a three second knockout. And the fight before that was a 12 second knockout. So he's 4-0 right now. His MMA debut almost went a total round. The reason why it was so long was because his opponent clinched up with him for like two minutes straight, which does show a little bit of a hole in Despain's grappling abilities as he is a striker through and through. He was a bronze medalist in the Olympics for Taekwondo in 2012. But the guy has absurd power. They might have gotten the replacement for Francis Ngannou, but an Ngannou who can head kick extremely well, has powerful leg kicks, one punch knockout ability, obviously. We just gotta see if he has takedown defense, if he's got a good chin. He did get hit once pretty clean and he took it well, knocked the guy out instantly after that. All we know is even if he makes mistakes, he can one shot anybody regardless. So as you can see right here, he goes and throws a body kick from the southpaw stance at his opponent. So showing that he could definitely fight in both stances. There's other fights where he was in the orthodox throwing kicks. Here he's in southpaw throwing the body kick against his opposite stance opponent. And his opponent actually landed a good right hand as the body kick was coming at him. And his opponent here is almost the same size as him. They're about the same height and everything. So he was able to reach in on Despain like that and catch him clean, but instantly, right after that happened, Despain countered him with a right hook that put him out cold. The guy was out before he hit the ground. Despain goes and misses his left hook and hammer fists him with his right hand as his opponent is dropping to the mat. Before he ever touched the ground, he landed a hammer fist too. That's how fast this six foot seven monster is. He's way faster than Francis Ngannou. I wouldn't say he's as fast as Cyril Gan, but he does move kind of like him. He does have that kind of bladed stance, really long with his legs and moves back and forth pretty quickly, even taking off angles for his jab and stuff. And when you look at his other fight here, his opponent's in southpaw, so he takes the orthodox stance to line up the kick. This seems to be a bit of a, a routine for him. Whatever stance his opponent's in, he's gonna take the opposite stance to line up that power kick. And the first thing he throws, just like the other fight, he throws his power kick, but this time to the head of his opponent. His opponent is able to block the kick with one arm. You could definitely see the impact getting through. Very powerful kick. Seems to have rocked him. His opponent's trying to grab the leg. And while his leg is still in the air, this is not too different of a dynamic from what Armin Saryukian did to Benil Dariush last weekend. Despain touches his opponent with the side of the hand, landing the right hook. It wasn't even a full power shot and his opponent went out cold. Arms in the air, looking like he's climbing a ladder. And every single time he KOs his opponent, he's always going for that extra hammer fist every single time, electrocuting their body. And then we look at the longest fight of his career, which is only like four minutes and 54 seconds. This time he takes the same stance as his opponent and he throws a right kick to the head. He's always starting his fights with long, powerful kicks. His opponent was able to block it though. And you always notice how Despain has his hands really low. He's very confident in his ability to move away from his opponent's attacks. Shooting in from long range, the jab sometimes the cross as well. And you can see this punch from him wobbles his opponent to the fence. And from there, you could definitely see where he gets a little bit wild. Trying to get a finish. His head's up in the air, which is the main thing I don't like right now. His chin is usually up in the air. And he can definitely get caught if he doesn't knock his opponent out in the meantime. So him throwing these punches while his opponent's covering up, it forces his opponent to literally run away from him. I don't blame him. Look at this guy. Imagine your back is up against a fence or against a wall and Robella's Despain is overshadowing you, throwing bombs. I would run away as well. Get out of there, man. Yeah, but you could definitely tell he does it a lot where whenever he's throwing punches, his chin up is in the air and it shows a, a bit of a habit from his Taekwondo days. And his opponent clinches up with him for literally over two minutes straight and then does it again later for like a minute straight. That's why this fight was so long, but he wasn't able to get out of the clinch. He wasn't able to escape. Showing a bit of a flaw in his game right there, but his leg kicks are also super powerful, hitting that inside leg kick on his opponent, blasting that leg to the side and around himself. He kicked his opponent from orthodox to southpaw. That's how powerful this guy is, man. And whenever his opponent wants to come in at him and throw some big punch because it does want to stay in the long range right there to eat these kicks, this pain is fast enough to move 
away from him and intercept him with the jab, forcing him backwards so he could line up another powerful leg kick. I mean, look at his opponent, man. His stance is completely deteriorating from these kicks. And that's where eventually he was able to line up the uppercut. So he's fencing with his lead hand. He's probing it out there to measure his distance and get his opponent's focus on it. And from there, he throws up the bolo uppercut from range as his opponent covers up and hits him directly clean to the jaw. And to go and finish his opponent, he gives a big feint that he's going to do the same thing. Throw that bolo uppercut. Look how his arm comes under. Looking like an uppercut, his opponent covers up and angles his body to the side to block that punch. But when he rotates his body to the side, it exposes the left side of his head around his guard. And that's what Despain targets. From a fake uppercut, he brings his arm over the side and connects him with a powerful right hook that KOs him out cold. I am super excited about Robella's Despain in the UFC. If I'm going to be completely honest here though, do I think he becomes champion? I don't. He's 35 years old already, and he does have defensive holes that I do see. When I saw Cyril gone before the UFC, when I made that prospect video, if you guys remember that, you guys knew how optimistic I was about Cyril Gan's chances in the UFC. This is like after his first MMA fight, by the way. I don't see the same thing with Rebella's Despain. I think he's going to get some crazy knockouts, great performances, but I definitely do see him getting caught, 100%. I don't expect him to fight that many wrestlers early on because he is still fairly inexperienced in MMA. Maybe guys that are pretty well-rounded, maybe they can test him there just like they did with Cyril Gan early on. But the striking matchups with this guy are going to be epic. I can't wait to see him make his debut, man. 